Mm, mm, mm. Today, I'm excited to show you guys my cook set, which I made myself, and I'll show you step by step how to make it for you. I'll show you how to make one yourself. It's ultra light. Let me bust out the scale. I'm gonna weigh it. 4.76 ounces. I'll show you how to make a cook set which weighs 4.76 ounces, which you can make for less than $20, but most of you will probably be able to make it for around 10 to 15. Let's get into it. I'm gonna show you what the components are, and then I will show you the materials and how to put them together to make this. So, cook pot, lid, aluminum foil windscreen, alcohol stove, measuring cup, mini Bic, empty soda bottle with alcohol fuel inside. Those are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven components of this cook set. Now let me show you how you can make one yourself. All right, here are the ingredients, not the ingredients, the materials that you need to put together this ultralight cook set yourself. And I should say this can all be done in less than an hour. You know, after the trip to Walmart, you can bring it home, make this in less than an hour. So it's easy. All right, what have we got here? We have aluminum pie pans. I bought a set of three um, and it cost me 88 cents. We're gonna use these to make our pot lid. Then we have a piece of aluminum foil. Mine is 25 inches long, which is the uh, correct length if you're using this mug, which I'll get to in a second. But so we have a piece of aluminum foil for our aluminum foil windscreen. We have a 12 ounce soda bottle. We have also some uh, alcohol fuel. I use yellow heat, which we'll put in the soda bottle. Then we have to make the alcohol fuel stove a fancy feast can, you know, this is commonly known as a cat food can stove or a fancy feast stove. Uh, it's very popular, but a fancy feast can and a hole puncher, a single hole punch. This is an aluminum Imusa mug, which you get at Walmart and it cost me $3. So this uh, I found in the home and kitchen section. I looked in the sporting goods section. It's not, at least it wasn't there in my Walmart. Maybe look there, but also look in the home and kitchen section. Uh, and it's $3, and this is the 1.25 quart mug. Uh, and then you want to grab your bottle of cough syrup. If you don't have one, you can pick one up at Walmart. I think I bought this for $5, because you don't need the cough syrup, you want the measuring cup that it comes with. And then finally, a mini Bic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you first how to make the alcohol fuel stove, the fancy fee stove. Then I will show you how to make the windscreen and then the, the pot lid out of this pie pan, and then we'll put it all together and test it out. I'll make some couscous with it and show you how it works, and then we will finish up. First things first, we've got the Fancy Feast can. We need to prep it by opening it, delabeling it, and cleaning it. Beautiful, now we have a clean and prepped Fancy Feast can. There's some sticky stuff left, but it doesn't really matter. So just once again, this is what the final product looks like. So what we're gonna do is prep the can to start punching these two rows of holes in it. The way we do that, grab a Sharpie, and this is what you do. So what I'm gonna do is sort of give myself a little guide for where to punch by marking 16 holes on the rim here. And the way I do that, you could do use a ruler and do it perfectly, but what I do is I just mark one on top and one on bottom, cutting it in half, and then I do the same thing, almost like kind of cutting a pizza. So now there's four, do it again, six, once more, eight. So now I have eight holes and then I just, I'll just mark one halfway between each of the eight holes. 16. It's not perfect, but it works. Next, grab your hole punch, and before we start punching holes, you'll see that there is right here a little rim, uh, a little bit of the inside rim sticking up. So what I wanna do is push that down. So just take your hole punch and just take one of the sides, like this corner right here, and just push it against there to flatten that out.
All right, that's good enough. Now we start punching holes. We're gonna punch two rows. And the first row, you wanna punch directly beneath this lip on the rim. And you want to just follow the dots that you've made for yourself and punch a hole underneath the lip, um, directly underneath the dot. All right, let's do it. Got my hole punch. And I just stick it over the lip where there's a dot. Sometimes it can be hard to, to see the hole and then punch it, right? Now there's the dot, there's the hole directly under the lip. And I just continue that process all the way around. All right, I've finished with the first row. As you can see, it is not perfect by any means. It doesn't have to be. And now I'm going to punch the second row in between the row or the holes of the first row. All right. So that's what I mean. You punch it beneath and between the holes of the first row. All right, there we are, we're done. You now have your own alcohol stove. That is it. Okay, moving on to the aluminum foil windscreen. I have a 25 inch long piece of aluminum foil here, which is the correct length for my cook pot. If you have a different size cook pot, if you're not using the IMUSA mug, then you're gonna have to calculate the appropriate length on your own. So once you have the piece of aluminum foil, well, let's get started. You take it and you fold it in half, hot dog style. Okay, once that is done, I'm going to fold each of the edges down about a half inch to reinforce them. Okay, now that I've doubled over all of the edges for some extra stability and rigidity, grab your hole punch, and we're gonna punch some holes about here, above this fold um, in this bottom half of the windscreen. The reason we're doing this is because it allows for some airflow and ventilation, and there is no set interval. I try to space them about an inch apart, but that's just me. Boom, windscreen is now done. And last but not least, pot lid time. Grab uh, a pie pan, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the bottom of the pie pan off. All right, so you just cut off the bottom of the pie pan. Next, grab your cook pot, place it upside down, on the bottom of the pie pan. Center it, and then what you're gonna start doing is you're gonna start folding up the pie pan around the rim of the cook pot. Because this cook pot has a handle, I won't be able to fold the pie pan over that handle, of course, but this is how it looks. Let me complete the other side. Boom, there we go. Now I've created a nice pot lid, which is a little tight, but I can always open up these, these edges more to make it a little looser. And look at that. Now I have a pot lid. It's not the most attractive thing, but I can sort of tighten it or loosen it as I need. Your very own <laughs> aluminum pot lid for less than a dollar. Now that you've made your alcohol stove, your aluminum foil windscreen, and your aluminum pot lid, let's put it all together. So just take the measuring cup off of your bottle of cough syrup 
and you have your own measuring cup, which is what you will use to measure the alcohol fuel that you put into your stove. For your soda bottle, remove the label and dump out the contents. Or this is a trick I learned recently. You can just snap your fingers like that works as well. Um, so now, and then what you have here, forgot to say, is yellow heat, which you can pour into your soda bottle as much as you need for your trip. Let's put it all together. What you need to do is roll up your aluminum foil windscreen. I'm just going to show you how it fits together. So I've rolled it up and you notice that it's too tall for the Imusa mug. So <laughs> I'm going to unroll it and what you have to do with this windscreen for this cook pot is just fold it in half, right? Okay, so I folded it in half and now I just roll it up again and I'll stick it in my cook pot. Boom. Then I drop in the alcohol stove with the measuring cup, put in the mini Bic, add on the lid, fold down the flaps. There you go. Your very own ultralight cook set now, I'm just gonna show you how you would light it and then we'll take it outside and test it. I'll cook some couscous with it. So let's say you get to your campsite or wherever you're gonna cook your dinner. You pull out your cook pot with everything inside. You take out your alcohol fuel stove, set it on the ground, take your alcohol fuel bottle and fill it with, fill the stove with alcohol fuel and then what you would do is you would light it, wait for it to heat up, maybe like 30 seconds for a minute. Um, you can put the windscreen around it, and then you put on your cook pot, and boil some water. Oh, I put the windscreen upside down. You want these holes on the windscreen to be on the bottom so that they let air in. Now, let's take this cook set outside, fire it up, and try to cook some couscous with it. All right, so now we're gonna put this thing to the test. We are going to cook some couscous with it just to show you how it works. I've already gone ahead and put some water and the spice packet contents into the Imusa mug. Now I'm going to light the alcohol stove. I have the fuel bottle with the measuring cup right here. I'm not the best at measuring a perfect amount of fuel. So I'm just going to put in maybe like two ounces. There's one, there's about one and a half. So the alcohol fuel, the yellow heat is in the alcohol stove. And to light it, all I need to do, because I've filled it pretty close to this second row of holes, I just stick my, I light my lighter and stick it into one of those holes. There we go. One uh, danger with alcohol fuel stoves is that it's very hard, sometimes in daylight like this, almost impossible to tell if it's lit or not, which is dangerous, right? It can be a fire hazard. So you just want to keep a close eye on your alcohol fuel stove at all times. And it, I mean, you probably can't even see the flame because I can't, but I can put my hand above it and know that it's going. So what I like to do is just let it run for about 30 seconds. There, it's starting to warm up now. I'm gonna put my windscreen around it because it is, there is a slight breeze. Oh yeah, now it's starting to get really hot. I'm going to put my mug on top. First, I'm actually going to cover it with the lid so the water boils a little quicker. All right, so to remove the windscreen and show you, the mug is on top of the alcohol fuel stove and because there's a little bit of a breeze, I'm gonna put my windscreen around it so that it will boil faster. And now we wait. The stove has been on for about four or five minutes and as you can see, it's starting to boil. I'm gonna wait till it's rolling, till it's a rolling boil and then I'm gonna take it off the stove and put in the couscous. Okay, the stove has been going for six or seven minutes now and it is at a nice rolling boil. I'm going to take away the windscreen so that I can have better access to this handle. So I have a bandana because this mug is aluminum, so it gets very hot. Um, it would burn your fingers to touch it right now. So I'm gonna get the bandana 
to take it off the stove and as you can see uh, it's sort of boiling which means it's on and it will keep going because alcohol stoves are difficult to put out I don't have a snuffer of any sort I just need to wait for all the fuel to burn out so in the meantime I'm going to pour the couscous in here and I think I give it a good stir and then cover it with the pot lid and I wait Five minutes. It has been five minutes since I put in the couscous. Let's take a look. I'm going to take off the lid and it looks pretty good. So I'm going to stick my spork in there and fluff it up. And you can see that's nice and fluffy and I can tell you that it is fully cooked. Also, as you can see, the alcohol fuel stove has completely uh, burnt up all the fuel, so it's empty now. But guys, that is this cook set in action. You've seen the stove, you've seen me boil some water and then use that to cook some couscous. It works great for those purposes. Now, let's take it back inside to finish things up. Guys, that is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and like it. That's uh, one small thing you can do to help more people find the video. Also, if you're interested in more videos like this, then subscribe because I'm doing uh, more DIY gear tutorials in the near future as well as more outdoor gear backpacking gear reviews and in the meantime head to walmart pick up the supplies try it out for yourself and then leave a comment below letting me know how it went i'm interested to hear and yeah that's it <laughs> thanks for watching until next time